Victor, how are you doing, my friend? Oh my God, no see you for a long time. Huh? How are you doing, man? Hey, 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 hey. Huh? Huh? Oh, hey, huh? <laughs> hey, can you use the hand sanitizer, please? Of course. Thank you. Right here, please. And Absolutely. keep. Don't forget to keep your two meter distance, please. No, it's automatic, sir. Just put your hand underneath. Uh, there you go, thank you. Make sure it's nice and clean. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Am I right? You tried cutting yourself, didn't you? Yeah, I tried just uh, leveling the sides down and just keeping the, the trim, like the haircut there. Oh dear. The, what's it called? Shape up? The shape yeah. up. Shape. Don't worry, I got you, man. I got you. I'll thank God for your life, bro. What's going on with you? It's a lifesaver. Promise me. about to fix me. Confidence restored. Confidence hey. restored. That's the one. Hashtag confidence restored. YouTube. Wagwan, it's Damien the Barber from Carter Creative Hair Studio. And today, I've got an afro, flat top with a number one on the sides and a nice parting to finish off. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to share too. I hope this video will help somebody out there. Just giving you an insight into the techniques that I use on a daily basis, depending on the type of hair that I'm dealing with. So this is a very tight Afro curl. And I'm starting off with a number two open on the Andis Master Cordless. I like to make sure I'm constantly combing out the hair I'm using an afro pick to make sure that the surface is nice and even. I like to constantly comb as I'm cutting to make sure it's nice. <laughs> so I'm starting to create the canvas, canvas shape by going straight up 180 degrees. Being careful not to follow the natural curve, the natural shape of the head above the parinal ridge. Now using my long wide tooth and small tooth comb just to now comb and fade the back and sides of his head. I can swap this comb over using a smaller teeth for the hair lower down on the back and sides and then I can use the wider teeth for the hair that's higher up on his head. I'm now using the number one guard open and I'm blending the number two into the back and sides lower down on his head. I'm also slightly cutting into the top as well, just to help thin out any dark spots. It also helps me to get that nice flat edge that I'm looking for on the side of the head. You can now start to see the growth pattern of his hair so we can start to comb it down and start to create the blend or the fade into the number one on the back and sides. I'm now using a clipper over comb technique just to help blend the back and sides into the top of the head on the parinal ridge. This comb's brilliant because it's nice and long, so it provides me with that, that 180 degree angle that I'm looking for on the side of the head to give that flat look. So 
and I'm using the clipper with the lever open, going with the grain just to flatten the hair down and smooth it off in the back and sides. So now I'm being able to see the growth pattern of the hair so I can help comb it down and go in with the Andes Master just to smooth it off. So now it's time to comb out the top of the head so it can start to create that flat surface. Using the wall senior cordless, I'm now using the freehand technique to create a nice flat even surface. This one's brilliant to practice just by holding your clipper in the air, draw a straight line. Maybe find a line on a wall or on a picture frame or something and just kind of hover your clipper along to try and mimic the action of creating a straight line with your clipper. Because the hair, afro hair is so dense, I can also use the surface to help guide the clipper along the top of the head. Constantly combing up to make sure that the surface is nice and even every time I cut. The problem with afro hair is it's very tight and very curly, so when you comb it up, it just wants to, to, to squeeze back up, to spring back together again. So I have to make sure I'm constantly combing to make sure it's nice and even. At this point, I'm also using my mirror, which you can't see, but that's helping me make sure that my level is straight. I'm getting a nice flat surface on the top of his head. I've actually got a flat fade blade on the wall senior, which is great for shaping afro hair. Eventually when I start to comb through the hair, it won't be rough. There won't be any loose hair standing up. That's what I'm going for. I'm looking for the point at which when I finish combing through the afro pick and the hair is staying where I want it to be, I know that it's nice and level and I can start to do my refinements. I'm now using the number one guard on the wall clipper. It actually fits quite nicely with the flat blade. Just doing a little bit of detailing now with the Babyliss Supermotor Trimmer. Another nice flat blade, so you can get really close and get some detail. So now you can see the haircut is now starting to take shape. Now I've created the lines around the edge of the back of the neck. I'm now going in with the wall cordless senior just to fade out the neck area, the nape area. 
I'm using the fade up technique for this one. Fading up is basically starting off with the lever closed on the clipper and then going up through the fade. I'm just edging up the hairline starting from the middle, working out to the right, then working out to the left. I like to keep it as natural as possible. The shaping up is usually my favorite part of the haircut. It's when the uh, haircut really starts to take shape, kind of frames everything. So, you know, it helps you look for any spots in the fade that might need completely blending out. It's when you can do your detail work with either your trimmer or your clipper. And now we're just gonna put back in the line. I'm just confirming the placement and how thick he wants the actual line putting in. Again, I'm combing out the hair just to make sure that the surface is nice and even because it's very easy with Afro hair for it to curl back up and cover the line up. So I've got to make sure that I'm combing the hair out as I'm drawing the line in, getting rid of any loose hairs with the comb. Once I've combed out the hair enough and I don't see that the hair's moving anymore, I know it's done and I can move on to the next technique. So now I'm using my flat comb. This is really good because it has a lot of surface to work on, so it can help me maintain the flat shape on the top of the head. Just going over now with my scissors, just to even off and really refine and detail the haircut. Get rid of any stragglers or any hair standing up. So at this part, it's more about the finishing touches, just making sure that everything's refined and looking good. The scissors are great because you can really get detailed. I'm using a scissor over comb technique just to cut into the, the back and sides of the head. also get inside the part and get rid of any little loose hairs that may be in the way. Now it's time for the enhancement. I'm using the fibers just to enhance the hairline and the line inside the part. This is a great technique I like to use to spread out the fibers because they, they can easily clump up. So the comb just helps to, to spread the fibers out and spread it amongst the hair, make it look more realistic, more natural. 
clients really love the enhancements, especially on the hairline, because that's the, the main part where clients look. When they look in the mirror, they're looking at their haircut. That's the first thing they see. So when that's nice and sharp, they tend to be really happy. So I'm now going over the hair fibers with some a very strong hold hairspray just to hold them hair, the fibers in place. But I usually like to make sure that the, the hair cut underneath the enhancements is cut nice and even, nice and sharp before I apply the enhancements. Because the last thing I want is when the enhancements do eventually come off, that the haircut still looks sharp and still looks fresh. And then going over with my trimmer, just to refine the lines, make everything look sharp, pop out and bang. Some more detailing with the Babyliss Pros. Really like this trimmer. Now it's on to the edging up with my Kai Captain. It's just giving me those, those extra finishing touches. It's more really about refinement at this point. This client came in for the signature experience and uh, I need to make sure that that's what he gets. This guy. How was the signature experience? This guy. Going, sir? Confidence restored is all I can say. <laughs> Hashtag confidence restored. <laughs> now this is amazing. Yo, you need to come get your new trims here, honestly. <sighs> Damn. I feel dangerous. I feel yeah. like I'm ready to go mess up. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man. Y'all should have seen the before. Hey man, I got him. I thank God for your life, bro. Still love with you. It's a lifesaver. <laughs> like, this is the after. This is. That's a picture on my Snapchat and um, Instagram. I don't know what I'm saying no more. It's too. It's magic. Yo, do you see this? Do you see this? Look at the angles. The, the angles, man. Look at that. God. Watch, I might cut you. It's too sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, man. What? <laughs> oh. I need, I need his skills. Confidence restored. Confidence restored, my man. Right there, confidence Baby restored. Baby and Carter. Jeez, the signature Carter experience Carter. right here. What? Book your trip. <laughs> Book your trip now. He's not even paying me to say this. <laughs> Legit, like. Look at this. <laughs> Yo, dude, I forgot, I forgot to get my final Woo. shot. What you see there? Confidence right there? restored, bro. You know, hashtag confidence. Damn. Restored. Damn. The ring can't even touch me. <laughs> I might cut you with this. <laughs> See you later, bro.